way you perceive a people and a community and an environment determines the way you respond to their challenges. This is why the late King Sarawiwa spent a lot of time, the short time he had, of course, before he was killed by the country, by the, by the government of Nigeria, working on, working on behalf of oil companies. Now, what he did realize was that the Ogoni, Ogoni culture had to be elevated to public knowledge. Ogoni people had to regain their self-respect, their cultural dignity, so that they could know that they have something to fight for and something to defend, that the environment belonged to them and not to anybody else. And that's why they rose up, not violently, although they were repressed in a very brutal and violent manner. So now, we, whenever there's uh, maybe an oil spill or a breach of oil infrastructure, especially the period when we had um, militancy, or had used to pick up arms, they would blow up a pipeline. Of course, they would announce ahead of time they were going to blow the pipeline, then they blow the pipeline. The government was concerned about how many barrels of oil was being lost, how, how much dollars, US dollars were being lost. They never considered about how much pollution would go into the environment, how much suffering was coming to the community, and how many people were losing their lives. The same thing with gas flaring. Gas flaring had been going on since 1956, when commercial exploration of oil and gas began. And in the early 1960s, the US, the United Kingdom government, British government, actually questioned Shell. And they, you could read this on their website. They questioned Shell about why they were burning these gas furnaces called gas flares in the Niger Delta. And they said that there was no market for the gas. And the British government then said in, in a document that was written in 1963 that what they're doing was atrocious and that one day they'll be held to, they'll be questioned, or in my own words, held to account for what they're doing. And so there was no market for gas in the early 60s, but now there's a whole lot of market for gas. Why is gas still being fled? That's the question. It's being fled because it's cheap for the corporations. Nigeria is awash with gas. We have more gas than oil. And so if you really need gas for export, for liquefied natural gas business, you can go to a gas field and, and get the gas. The gas that goes in the pipe going to West Africa, and they were told that it was going to help reduce gas flooding, but only 20% of that gas is associated gas. The gas that is being fled is gas associated with crude oil extraction, not gas from the gas fields. And it's not only the gas that comes with oil, when the oil is extracted, it comes also with polluted water, produced water, which is extremely polluting, and some of them are radioactive. These are all dumped into the environment with minimal tr treatment or oversight. So the environment is really very challenged, and we believe that it's time for this to be halted.